Is there a limit to how much protein our muscles can use after a workout? Why is it so important that we get enough protein? And is it true that the maximum amount of protein our bodies can use after a workout is limited to just 30 to 40 grams? Well, guess what? That might not be true, but the question is how much protein can we load up on after exercise? And will it all go to making muscle? To put everything into context, there are two points you need to consider about building muscle. First, one of the best ways to stimulate muscle growth or what we call muscle synthesis is eating after a fast or by doing a bout of exercise. Number two, you have to remember that working out in the gym or being involved in any type of exercise, you're tearing through your muscle fibers. Therefore, you wanna make sure that you eat enough protein so that it can repair this damage and potentially grow even more muscles than when you started. Number three, the most important thing is that muscle mass will determine your metabolic rate. So if you're trying to lose weight, you want to be able to preserve your muscle tissue because if you don't, your metabolic rate will crash and you'll probably end up gaining your weight back within a blink of an eye. So let's look at what you've been told in the past about building muscle. First, the best way that you can maximize your muscle growth is to eat a number of meals containing about 30 to 40 grams of protein throughout the day. And this muscle growth or synthesis quickly tapers off after a few hours and any excess protein eaten beyond this amount would be wasted because it would just be oxidized or burned off. And this is a reason why you've been told that you'd have to eat a number of high protein meals every few hours to get a continuous trigger for muscle protein synthesis. However, new research from Cell Reports actually challenges this notion, revealing that you might be able to consume much more than 30 to 40 grams of protein post more workout without it getting burned off. Well, in order to understand this study, you really need to understand the fundamentals of protein biochemistry. So when we eat protein, it gets broken down in our gut into amino acids, which then gets absorbed into our blood. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, and these blocks play a crucial role in muscle protein synthesis because these amino acids usually go to different parts of the body to make your heart muscle, to make your beautiful skin, or to make bone. Now, researchers in this cell paper did some cool experiments. They took blood and muscle biopsies before and after the participants in the study were given shakes containing zero, 25, or 100 grams of protein after an exhaustive 60-minute workout. The researchers then tracked the amino acids for about 12 hours in the body by putting a special label on them so they could see if it was getting burned off or if it was going into the muscle tissue. And what they found was that when the participants consumed about 100 grams of protein, there was much more amino acids in the blood than when they consumed 25 grams of protein. It's what we call a dose-dependent response. And that's no surprise. Essentially, more protein that we eat, the more that gets absorbed into the blood. So where are they going after that? To the muscle or are they getting burned up? Well, that's where the muscle biopsies come in. What they found is that the 100 grams of protein ended up increasing protein synthesis more than the 25 grams of milk protein. And burn rate or the wastage of the protein between the 25 grams and the 100 grams were very similar and quite low, which completely contradicts the idea that if you eat too much protein, it's just gonna get wasted. They also found that the more protein that you eat, the longer it takes to digest in your stomach. This means that after eating 100 grams of protein, muscle growth was still occurring after 12 hours. And it wasn't just tapering off after three hours. Essentially, what this is telling us is that you can probably eat your whole day's protein requirement in one meal, and you may not have to break it up into three or four smaller meals throughout the day. The general rule of thumb is that you take the total amount of protein that you're supposed to eat in a day, and then you just divide it up by the number of meals you're going to have. So if your requirement is about 150 grams of protein per day and you intend to eat three meals, that's roughly about 50 grams of protein per meal. Or you can just eat 150 grams of protein all in one meal. It essentially ends up being the same thing. So this study shows that you don't have to distribute your protein intake throughout the day to keep protein synthesis elevated all day long. But you might be thinking, well, 
how much protein can I eat in one sitting? Is there actually an upper limit? If you look at the data carefully, there was no real drop off in protein synthesis, even after 100 grams, which means that if they tested 150 grams or 200 grams, muscle growth may have still been going up. When you think about it, it does make sense when you look at animals in the wild. When tigers and lions kill an antelope, they consume a large amount of animal meat all at once to keep them going for a while until they hump their next antelope in a few days. They're eating like three, four, 500 grams of protein at a time without most of it going to waste. So it doesn't really make sense, does it, that the muscle synthesis would get cut off at 30 grams of antelope. These animals really do need their muscle strength to track down their next prey after a few days. And therefore, it would make sense that these mammals have a system to enable prolonged muscle protein synthesis with a bolus of protein ingestion. Apparently, snakes have elevated protein synthesis rates up to 10 days because it takes that long to digest and absorb their victim with only 25% of it being burned off. If you think about it, Muslim people participate in Ramadan yearly where they just eat once a day for 30 days. It may be possible that they get sufficient protein from that one meal if it's loaded with protein-rich food. And this study also puts a new spin on people who practice OMAD or those that eat one meal a day. It has always been recommended that doing OMAD every day is probably not a good thing because it would be really difficult to get your daily protein requirements in one meal. However, this study shows that loading yourself up with protein in one meal may be sufficient to maintain skeletal muscle. However, I wouldn't encourage OMAD as a daily practice for most people, but it may be a strategy you can incorporate once or twice a week if you're trying to lose weight to keep your calories down. What does this study mean to you and me? What are some of the practical takeaways? Well, right after my workout, I've just stimulated my muscles to grow, and this will be activated for about 24 hours. So to get the most bang for the buck during this period, I would probably have a whey or pea protein shake right after my workout because these proteins digest and absorb really quickly. So your muscles can use it right away. And after that, I would probably have some slower digesting proteins like casein or soy protein shake or some chicken, eggs, fish or beef. And why would I do that, you ask? Well, because I would probably get the initial muscle growth trigger from the quick absorbing proteins, and then I would get a prolonged stimulation from the slower absorbing proteins. In this way, I may be able to maximize growth over a longer period of time. So why are the results of this study so different from the previous studies? Well, the methods they use to measure protein synthesis is one of the best. And they also collected more blood and biopsy samples than most other studies. However, we don't normally consume milk proteins, which is about 80% casein as our main protein source. And this study was also done in young untrained males. So keep this in mind when you're thinking about how does this study apply to my everyday life. However, this study does challenge the traditional view that excess protein beyond a certain threshold would simply be wasted or oxidized. So if you're a gym junkie, a marathon runner, or a weekend warrior, you may be able to optimize your recovery and muscle growth by fueling up with more proteins than you thought possible. After learning all these powerful tips I've just taught, you still might be struggling with weight loss or exercise optimization. And that means you still need more information to fix this. And believe it or not, the key information you need is in this next video right here. And to really get the results, you wanna make sure you come back to watch next week's video where I'm gonna talk about how much protein you actually need and some really interesting strategies and recipes to sneak protein in your everyday meals.